Madam Registrar, could you call the case, please? Good afternoon, Your Honor. This is the case IT0264, the prosecution versus Libomir Borov Shanin. I thank you, Madam, and good afternoon to you. Mr. Borov Shanin. Before we proceed any further, I would like to make sure that the proceedings and every part of the proceedings which are being conducted in English are being translated to you in your own language or in a language which you can understand. Yes, I understand the translation I'm receiving. Thank you. Uh, please, if at any time during the proceedings there are problems with interpretation, uh, do draw my attention straight away because it's important that you are in a position to follow what is happening here at any given time. Okay, thank you. You may sit down for the time being. Uh, let's have uh, the appearances uh, for the prosecution. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Peter McCloskey and with me, Janet Stewart. I thank you and good afternoon to you and your team. Appearances uh, for uh, the accused, Mr. Borov Chanin. Good afternoon, Colleen Rowan for Mr. Borov Chanin. I'm appearing as duty counsel today and also with me is Mr. Miodrag Stoyanovic. He is an attorney who has a prior relationship with Mr. Borov Chanin and I would request with the court's permission that he could be present during the proceedings for this initial appearance. Also present with us is Dragoslav Jutkic, who is an interpreter um, for Mr. Stoyanovich. All right. Uh, I, I thank you, Madam uh, Rowan. As you know, um, I've made an exception uh, to the rule allowing uh, the gentleman, Mr. Miodrag Stoyanovich, and his uh, interpreter uh, to be present uh, by your side. And the understanding uh, is, of course, that uh, they have no right of representation today. And that is why I insisted that they do not uh, wear robes and that it's important that they uh, make no intervention uh, until the, uh, uh, Mr. Um, uh, Stoyanovich's uh, position is regularized. I appreciate that very much. Thank you. Okay. I thank you. Now, um, uh, Mr. Borov Charin. And something which, uh, to which I give uh, fundamental importance, we will be proceeding uh, with uh, what is known as initial appearance, your initial appearance in this case. Uh, I, uh, it is my duty, my responsibility to uh, inform you that uh, before this tribunal, you enjoy uh, a right to remain silent throughout the entire proceedings, not just today, but in all other hearings that you will uh, be summoned to attend to. Basically, what this means is that no one can force you to answer any question that is put to you or to make any declaration uh, before or to this tribunal or to anyone else uh, for that matter. I will be, in the course of today's uh, initial uh, hearing, be making, uh, putting some questions to you, obviously, which uh, uh, fall under this category as well. And, uh, but uh, what is important is that I want to make sure that you are aware uh, the, of, of, of this uh, right that uh, you enjoy throughout the entire process here. Okay, thank you. Okay. If you have any questions in regard, uh, please do not hesitate to, to uh, put them through uh, your duty counsel for today. You may sit down. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. For the moment, I have no questions. You may sit down. I take it that uh, later on there will be, or there is going to be, a waiver uh, as regards the reading of the indictment. Uh, am I correct? You are correct. Okay. So I will limit uh, myself uh, to give some information, uh, not only for the sake of your client, but also and primarily so for the sake of those who are following these proceedings. I think in accomplishing or seeking to accomplish our role, uh, this tribunal has a duty to um, uh, keep the public informed of uh, what uh, the uh, indictment uh, basically consists uh, of. Um, um, the accused, uh, Mr. Borovchanin, uh, is included in the indictment with case number IT-0264, which uh, was confirmed uh, on the 6th of September of 2002. Actually, um, uh, it uh, was signed on the 6th of September in 2002 and was confirmed by my colleague, uh, Judge Wolfgang uh, Schomburg. Uh, initially, it was under seal, uh, but then it was uh, made uh, public uh, by an order of this tribunal on the 27th of September of the same year, of 2002. The indictment is pretty much uh, detailed, and uh, I will not, of course, go into each and every uh, detail that is contained therein. But I will give the uh, basics. The indictment alleges that uh, you, Mr. Lyubomir, uh, Lyubomir Borovchanin, uh, uh, while you were deputy commander of the Special Police Brigade, which throughout the indictment is referred to as the SPB of the MOP, which is the Ministry of Interior, that you were present in and around the areas of Bratunac, Potocari, Sandici, Kravica, Srebrenica, and Zvornik from the 11th of July to the 18th of July of 1995. According to the indictment, you were ordered to report to Radislav Kirstic, who was then chief of staff of the Drina Corps of the VRS, which is the Bosnian Serb Army. The indictment also alleges that units under your command were deployed in and around the areas of Potocari, Sandici, Kravica, and Zvornik from the 12th of July to the 18th of July of 1995. In the several days following the attack on Srebrenica, <clears throat> according to the prosecutor, VRS and MUP forces captured, detained, summarily executed and buried over 7,000 Bosnian Muslim men and boys from the Srebrenica enclave, and in addition forcibly transferred the Bosnian Muslim women and children of Srebrenica out of the enclave. The indictment which was confirmed against you, Mr. Borovchanin, refers to your alleged involvement in the opportunistic killings in Potocari, opportunistic killings in Bratunac, wide-scale and organized killings in Potocari and Tishka, 
killings and mistreatment of prisoners captured along the Bratunac military road and wide-scale and organized killings in the Dzvonik area as well as other opportunistic killings. I will dwell on uh, this for a while. With regard to the opportunistic killings in Potocari, there are instances which refer to the 12th and the 13th of July of 1995, referring to killings of several Bosnian Muslim men and women. With regard to the opportunistic killings in Bratunac, again, the events that the uh, indictment refers to relate to the 12th of July on one occasion, where more than 50 Bosnian Muslim men were taken from a hangar behind the Vuk Karadzic Elementary School in Bratunac and summarily executed and other events which allegedly took place on the 13th of July and also on one occasion on the in the morning of the 15th of July where again several persons were summarily executed. With regard to white scale and organized killings in Potocari and Tishka The indictment refers to events that uh, took place on the 12th of July 1995 in Potocari in between the zinc factory and Aliyah's house where 80 to 100 Muslim, Muslim, uh, Bos uh, Bosnian Muslim men were executed by decapitation. And as far as Tishka is concerned, on the 13th of July, again we have a number of men and women who were summarily executed. With regard to the killings and mistreatment of prisoners captured along the Bratunac military road, there are several events, and these relate to those events that uh, took place in the Yadar River on the 13th of July, Cherska Valley also on the 13th of July, Kravitsa Warehouse again on the 13th of July but then also on the 14th and 16th of July, Sandici Meadow again we're talking of the 13th and the 14th of July, always 1995. Kravitsa Market, as well, it's on the 13th and 14th of July. Kravitsa School, at the 13th and 14th of July. Bratunac Military Road, after the 13th of July, uh, through about the 16th of July. With regard to the Zvonik area, the indictment alleges killings, which took place in Orahovac near Latsete on the 13th of July, the Petkovci school on the 14th of July, the dam near Petkovsky on the 14th and 15th of July, Pilica school on the 14th and 15th of July, Branievo military farm on the 16th of July, Pilica Cultural Center on the 16th of July, Kotsluk on the 16th of July, and in most uh, instances the uh, prosecution alleges that on the following day then uh, members of the Dzvornik Engineering Company of the Dzvornik Br Br Brigade and others <coughs> buried the victims or disposed of the bodies. 
There are several other opportunistic killings that are mentioned in the indictment. And according to the prosecution, this happened as far as the Bratunaj Brigade zone is concerned in Nova Kasaba, in Konievich Polje, in Glogova, and uh, then there are allegations directed specifically to the Bratunac uh, Brigade in relation to in certain identified individuals that were, according to the indictment, executed. As so regards the Zvornik uh, Brigade, there are similar al allegations, and the events are supposed to have taken place in Nedzuk, uh, in particular, and in other areas nearby. The prosecution uh, alleges also that uh, you, uh, Mr. Borovchanin, together with other VRS and MUP officers and units who are identified in the indictment, and uh, uh, which I don't need to repeat here, uh, you were a member of and knowingly participated in a joint criminal enterprise, the common purpose of which was, amongst other things, <coughs> to forcibly transfer the women and children from the Srebrenica enclave to Kladania on the 12th and 13th of July 1995 and to capture, detain, summarily execute by firing squad, bury and rebury thousands of Bosnian Muslim men and boys aged 16 to 60 from the Srebrenica enclave from the 12th of July 1995 until and about the 19th of July 1995. The indictment, and this is very important for you to uh, understand, uh, charges you under two different modes of criminal liability. You're charged under Article 7.1 of the statute, which is uh, individual criminal responsibility, but also under seven Article 7.3 of our statute, which uh, holds responsible uh, for uh, crimes um, uh, mentioned in the statute itself, those who are criminally responsible in virtue of their superior uh, command. We refer to this as superior criminal uh, responsibility. This permeates the entire indictment. This is how it starts and this is how it ends. You have got uh, several counts in this indictment. And I will start with the first one, which is perhaps the most serious of them all. And this is one count of complicity in genocide. Uh, genocide uh, being one of the crimes that uh, our statute uh, contemplates. I will come to the counts later on today, or if you're not going to enter a plea today, in due course when we have the additional uh, initial appearance. Then you have four counts of crimes against humanity. Again, crimes against humanity are crimes uh, contemplated by our statute in Article 5. And namely, these four uh, crimes that are being uh, brought forward against you are extermination, murder, persecution on political, racial, and religious grounds, and inhumane acts consisting in forcible transfer. Then finally, you have one count of a violation of the laws or customs of war, uh, which is uh, contemplated under Article 3 of the statute, uh, and the uh, violation, according to the prosecution, according to the indictment, consists in murder. That's the information I have as regards the indictment. 
I want you to know, uh, Mr. Borov Chanin, that uh, by order of the president of uh, this tribunal, His Excellency Professor Theodore Miron, dated uh, 1st of April of this year, uh, your case was assigned to uh, my trial chamber, that is trial chamber two, of which I happen to be the presiding judge. As such, my capacity as presiding judge on the same day, uh, that is on the 1st of April of this year, I appointed myself, I designated myself uh, for the purpose uh, to be the pre-trial judge for the purpose of uh, today's initial appearance. Who will uh, deal with the pre-trial um, uh, proceedings? I have still not uh, decided, but uh, eventually I will, I will uh, take the decision uh, in the, in the uh, next uh, few days and you will be informed accordingly. And that applies also if uh, today's initial appearance is adjourned uh, to the additional initial appearance. It may not necessarily be myself. Um, I am now going to proceed with the uh, so-called procedural part of the initial appearance. Uh, and this I am doing uh, pursuant to Rule 62 of our Rules of Procedure and Evidence. And I suggest to you, um, Mr. Borov Chanin, that if you have not yet been given a copy of uh, the Rules of Evidence uh, and Procedure of this Tribunal, that you try and acquire one. They exist in your own language, uh, and, and uh, they you will be useful to have by your side uh, all the time. Um, uh, after having uh, uh, finished with, with the initial uh, part of the initial appearance, I will then move to the perhaps what is the most important formality uh, of uh, this uh, procedure, and uh, namely to formally uh, charge you. Um, Mr. Borov Chanin, I'd like you to stand up uh, now, please. Um, uh, first matter that I would like to raise uh, relates to legal representation. And this I am tasked to do by the statute uh, itself, apart from the rules. Uh, I did hear uh, Madame Colleen Rowan. Uh, state earlier on that uh, she has been appointed as duty counsel for the purpose of uh, today's initial appearance. And I do thank you, Madam, for having accepted in the first place. So as far as today's uh, representation is concerned, I would imagine that there is very little uh, to say on your part. But if you have anything to say, please speak out now. For the time being, only as regards the representation uh, during today's sitting by uh, Ms. Uh, Rowan. Your Honor, as for my legal representation, the duty counsel, I became acquainted with her yesterday and I realized that she was the duty counsel for this first initial appearance of mine. I have authorized her, I authorized her on time, or rather I have authorized Mr. Miodrag Stoyanovic to represent me. I hope that I will receive a positive response because I think that electing him as counsel would be in the interests of justice. Uh, again, I thank you. Uh, that is something that uh, obviously it's very important for me as pre-trial judge to know. Uh, it's something that I absolutely cannot comment upon today uh, because it falls within the jurisdiction of the uh, registrar who has to follow uh, certain uh, rules before he can proceed to assigning you uh, proper counsel. Um, and uh, if uh, Mr. Stojanovic uh, qualifies, uh, then uh, I would imagine that there shouldn't be any, any problems. But I uh, want you to understand that I am not in a position to comment any, 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 any further. Um, um, I will later on come again on matters related to uh, representation. 
Um, uh, but for the time being, I can leave it at that uh, because I'm more interested for the time being as regards today's initial uh, appearance. Um, uh, now, Mr. Borov Chanin, uh, uh, could you please uh, give me your full name uh, for the record? My name is Lyubomir Borovchanin. I thank you. You're free to answer, uh, not to answer this question, um, uh, because it may uh, provide an answer that uh, could be later on useful uh, to the prosecution uh, in matters of identification. But do you have a nickname? Yes, I do. My nickname is Lubisha. Mostly people call me Lubisha. Okay. I thank you. Could I have your date of birth, please? I was born on the 27th of February, 1960. And your place of birth, please? Han Piersak, Han Piersak Bosnia-Herzegovina. And uh, could you tell us what your nationality is at present? I'm a Serb. I'm a Serb by nationality. Right, now I will be asking you for your address, your last uh, address, but I don't think that this is uh, important for the public to know. So we'll go into private uh, session uh, for a while, and then you can give me your last address. Let's go into private session, please, and don't answer before I tell you to do so. Yes, we are in open.